Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Boy, CES 2022 is shaping up to be very interesting indeed. We've already had AMD and uh, NVIDIA show off their wares, or at least some of their wares. We'll get into that more in just a moment in their respective conferences. And as of the time I'm recording this, Intel are still putting on their conference. Um, yeah, speaking of Intel, I've also reviewed a i5-12400 as well as an MSI B660 motherboard. So if you're interested in checking out the performance of those, you can of course find links down below. And yeah, let's just say CES 2022 has been really interesting for all companies involved. AMD in particular seems to have had a lot of hype surrounding its event. And the company have provided some details now of the 5800X 3D processor. Now, as the name would imply, it's an 8-core 16-thread part. And if you cast your minds back to when AMD first showed off the Vcache tech, it was actually with a processor which actually had 12 cores. So it's quite interesting that they are only revealing this 8-core part, whether there's another CPU that perhaps they haven't uh, revealed yet or whether this is all we're going to get we don't know if i had to take a guess it could be the part shortage maybe this is one of the reasons that amd are doing this manufacturing you know problems not necessarily the difficulty of actually you know the engineering challenge just the uh, shortages that are going on and possibly as well like at the end of the day zen 4 is going to release later this year and uh you know, I suspect for high core performance anyway, or at least, you know, 16 cores or whatever, AMD will want to put a lot of focus on this. Nevertheless, what has been announced by AMD is pretty impressive. We're looking at a base frequency of uh, 3.4 gigahertz and a boost of uh, 4.5. So there's a slight clock frequency retrogression, but pretty much everything else is identical to what we've already had with the 5800X. Same number of cores slash threads, TDP is identical. One really nice thing about this though is it does work on the 400 series boards as well. I imagine you'll probably have to do a BIOS update on the usual, you know, caveats, but ultimately this is looking a really, this looking to be, excuse me, a really nice processor and it's going to be very competitive with Intel's older lake in gaming. In fact, according to AMD's own benchmarks, it actually is faster than uh, older lake. So we'll wait and see. At the end of the day, I'm possibly more interested just to see how this is going to affect prices from AMD stack and see what happens with the shuffle, particularly now as obviously uh, Intel are releasing the 12400 and a plethora of other processors. So at the end of the day, AMD are being, well, AMD. They are, in my opinion, releasing this Vcache series of CPUs as well as kind of a demonstration of their engineering as well as kind of a proof of concept and to kind of test things internally. And I do suspect that these processes are going to be a really good sign of what's to come. Speaking of what's to come, while the Ryzen Vcache or the uh, 5800X3D is going to be launching uh, spring. I haven't provided a release date. The second half of this year is going to be, uh, well, Raphael. And Raphael, of course, is going to be a Zen 4 on the Ryzen platform, also known as AM5. They haven't provided an exact release date, but personally, I've been hearing it's going to be quite late this year. So I suspect owners who buy the, you know, uh, you know, this newfangled 5800 are not going to be too upset. But, you know, if you've already got, let's just say for the sake of discussion, like a 5950X or something like that, you're certainly not going to want to go down in core count. And by golly, AMD have got something for you. Specifications were not confirmed, of course, at this time. But what they have said is that it's going to be a brand new architecture. Basically, they are reaffirming that we have IPC gains and some other things. They were not they're not specified personally i've been hearing around 25 percent ipc and possibly 35 to 40 percent uh, improvements to performance unfortunately of course um with ipc and any other discussion around that nature it's quite difficult to really nail down what they're discussing is it gaming performance is it a specific benchmark with very specific criteria it's like it's quite difficult to know i personally have been hearing it's single thread performance and you know average ipc over several workloads for the 25 percent and the 40 percent was inclusive of clock frequency but yeah take that with a pinch of salt until i know anything further um as for everything else we also have a new socket as well 
So as for other details about this platform, we're looking at 105 to 120 watts TDP. That's 170 watts over upper bound range. 28 uh, PCIe Gen 5 lanes, although these are exclusive to the CPU. Nothing too surprising there. And of course, it's using dual channel DDR5 memory. Clock frequency support, at least as far as I know, was not announced. And we also, of course, have confirmation that it's using TSMC's 5NM process with a 6NM IOD. AMD also showed the processor working and it was running 5 gigahertz. Now, again, I've kind of been hearing that it's faster than that, that 5 gigahertz may not be the highest clock frequency. But yeah, as always, guys, you know, rumors and all. However, it was shown to be running Halo Infinite, which is pretty awesome and does show that at the end of the day, the silicon is working in AMD's labs. And personally, I'm quite hyped about it. Also, I apologize if you can hear a car horn in the background. I have no idea what's going on. Um, it was really quiet until like just like five minutes ago and then suddenly someone's just constantly beeping a car horn, which is like not ideal. So hopefully you can't hear it too bad. 10,752 CUDA cores. That's how many you will get with the RTX 1390 Ti. Yeah, that's right, Ti. There was a very interesting thing from a couple of the NVIDIA guys that was on, uh, well, the official live stream today. Basically, one of them called it TI, <laughs> one called it TI, uh, TI. Personally, I prefer the name TI because it's easier to say. Let me know down below. Do you prefer TI or TI? Either way, this is a new premium product from NVIDIA and will represent the pinnacle of the company's engineering efforts. And I imagine it's going to be about the fastest GPU on the planet when it does release. Now, an interesting thing here, NVIDIA have not actually revealed all of the details of the GPU allegedly, including the pricing, and have said that this is going to come later this month. And basically, this card is absolutely ridiculous. So the specifications that we've been hearing for quite some time now do appear to be accurate. It's got 21 GBPS memory, and the uh, base and boost frequency have actually increased as well. So we're looking at 1560 megahertz for the base frequency, and the boost is 1860. And this is with a TDP of 450 watts. So it does appear that my rumors that uh, we were seeing higher clock frequencies for the RTX 3090 Ti do seem to be accurate. There's not much to say about this GPU other than it is absolutely ridiculous. There is also a completely brand new spanking PCB as well. And basically, it's still using a 12-pin power input. So the rumors that we were hearing a while ago that it was, you know, two 12 pins, that doesn't seem to be accurate. I'm not too surprised about that, though, because at the end of the day, one 12 pin is more than enough for power. However, even so, we are looking at 18 power chokes and furthermore, 22 phase design with a brand new uh, board as well. So this is kind of ridiculous, honestly. I kind of look forward to checking out what this thing is going to be uh, able to be, uh, you know, achieve in terms of performance. But yeah, no details, of course, as yet in terms of benchmarks or anything like that. I will also say that they've not confirmed pricing. But the rumor that we've already been hearing is that it's around the same price as the RTX 3090 plus a couple of extra bucks. Personally, I've been hearing really conflicting things. Someone told me it's basically going to replace the 3090. And then another source told me that, no, nope, they're going to basically coexist. And this is going to be much more expensive. I honestly don't know. NVIDIA themselves obviously kind of are debating things. So I, I personally wouldn't really want to cast a stone in any direction. Also, we have the RTX 3050, which is, as the name would imply, the lowest end SKU now in the RTX 30 lineup. So it's basically just a cut down GA106, and it's going to feature 2,560 CUDA cores with a TGP of just 130 watts. It's got 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, so that gives us a brand total of 224 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's going to launch uh, late this month, that's the 27th. But the price is going to be about 250 US dollars. At least that's the MSRP. God knows what it's going to cost, uh, you know, at retail. Hopefully it won't be too insane. At the end of the day, I don't know how much this card is going to appeal to miners. The only thing is, of course, it's quite power efficient. However, I don't know what the hash rate is at the moment. 
and obviously it's probably going to be you know mining rate limited and all that jazz but even so i'm quite interested to see what this gpu is capable of it's a great 1080p card and we also have just real quick several announcements from nvidia's mobile gpus i won't spend too long on this because they actually haven't confirmed all of the specifications but they have provided us some details of the rtx 3080 ti mobile as well as the 3070 ti Basically, the specifications for the memory configuration are identical to what we've been hearing. And these are going to be featured in premium laptops. So the 3070 Ti is going to be in laptops at 1500 bucks or more. And $2,500 or more is going to net you a 3080 Ti. And these cards are going to be fast, like really fast, like 70% faster, for example, for the 3070 Ti over the RTX 2070 Super. So that is pretty impressive. Um, again, though, they haven't provided all of the details yet, and it seems to be coming in an event later this month. And I think that's just about it for now, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. As I said, I'll be going much more in-depth into perhaps a couple of the announcements later on. Um, but for now, I am going to get going because it's been a really long day with all of the Intel uh, reviews and other bits and pieces. So thanks for all of the support, and hopefully this year is seeing you uh, having a really good one. I'll see you soon. That was a really clumsy extra, extra but whatever. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. With all that said, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.